Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn, and today I'll be by myself. But as always, welcome to our show. Well, guys, we're back again this week, and unfortunately, my co-host Patrick will not be with us today as he's currently sick. So hang in there, buddy. We'll uh, hope to have you back for next episode. But we also just wanted to take a moment and uh, thank you guys for, for helping us reach 400 subscribers this past week on YouTube. Um, you know, that's a big accomplishment for us. And, you know, without your guys' support, you know, watching every week, we wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. So we really appreciate, you know, all the comments you guys give us and, um, you know, words of encouragement and, um, you know, interactions you guys give us on on social media and also on YouTube. So we uh, we hope to reach 500 in the near future. But, you know, for right now, we're, we're uh, excited to be back this week for another episode. You know, we had some interesting performances this past week i would say we had some good midweek performances in some of the cup games um, that went on especially in germany and then we had some not so great performances over the weekend or in some cases players not even playing over the weekend or playing very little so um yeah let's uh let's get into our show today all right guys so the first player we want to talk about today is none other than christian pulisic so christian pulisic had a very good game midweek um in dortmund's 3-3 I guess, loss on penalties to Werder Bremen in the DFB Cup. Um, so, you know, Christian Pulisic started this game, played all 120 minutes, also got, a, you know, a crucial go-ahead goal at the time at the end of the first period of extra time for Dortmund to make the score 2-1. And at that point, it looked like, you know, Dortmund had kind of broken through and, um, you know, we're going to win the game. So it was, a, it was a, you know, key, crucial goal for Dortmund. But unfortunately, you know, they came back. Um, tied it up right before the end of, um, you know, end of the game at 3-3. So it was uh, definitely a thrilling game, but it was also a pretty good game from Christian Pulisic. You know, this is um, one of the big, bigger opportunities he's had recently for Dortmund. So um, I definitely think he put his first foot forward in this game. You know, there was several times where he lost the ball, as we've seen Christian do. But um, in this game, he also just looked looked very dangerous, very composed, he was linking play very well. Um, you know, he scored the goal, so that's that's always great to see. And he also had a really good, uh, I believe it was a, a cross into the box earlier in, um, in you know, regular time that could have led to a goal and was a really nice play by him. So, um, you know, unfortunately, Dortmund weren't able to, um, you know, pull out the win in penalties and stay in the DFB Cup. So, unfortunately, they won't be winning that trophy this season. But, um, yeah, it was good to see Christian Pulisic play a very good game, in my opinion, and, um, you know, just get back on the pitch for a long period of time. You know, 120 minutes is um, probably close to as many minutes as he's had in probably the past month, month and a half. So that's sad to say, but, you know, at the same point in time, it's good to see him him getting on the pitch and being a difference maker for, for Dortmund. But, um, you know, over the weekend then, moving on to that, uh, Christian Pulisic did not play for Dortmund in their 3-3 draw with Hoffenheim. So yet another um, draw for Dortmund and unfortunately points dropped for them. But, you know, Christian wasn't involved in this game, was on the bench for them. But, um, you know, playing 120 minutes midweek, it wasn't very surprising to see him not involved in this game. But, uh, yeah, the, we'll have to monitor, you know, what Dortmund do in the Bundesliga next weekend. Um, and I also wanted to mention that Dortmund have a very big um, Champions League match coming up against Tottenham on Wednesday. I'm filming this on a Tuesday, so unfortunately I won't be able to, to talk about this game in this episode. But um, yeah, it, it looks like Marco Royce is actually out with an injury for Dortmund. So Christian Pulisic might get another chance to uh, to start for Dortmund in a, in a crucial game for them. So that'll be inter interesting to see. Um, you know, Dortmund played Tottenham last year. And I thought Christian Pulisic played well in both of those games. Um, it's definitely a familiar foe for for Dortmund. So I think, uh, yeah, I think I think they have uh, you know an upper hand in this in this in this match because uh, you know Tottenham's without Harry Kane as well in this matchup. So kind of the two key players on both sides are out. But um, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked to see Christian start in this game. I think he'll definitely play a role in this game, um, even if he doesn't start. So. That'll definitely be interesting to watch and, 
you know, we're, we're, we're excited to see Christian back on the pitch now for, for Dortmund and hopefully, you know, get some, some good opportunities strung together here and, um, you know, produce. I, I, like I said, I think he looked good this, this, during this midweek game. And, yeah, can't wait to uh, hopefully report next week about a strong uh, Champions League performance. Uh, but, yeah, so now moving on, we're going to go um, over to Scotland and talk about one of our Scottish Yankees. And that would be none other than Tim Weya. So Tim actually played in two games for Celtic this past week. And the first game was last weekend. He played um, 90 minutes for Celtic in their 2-0 win over Hibernian. Actually, that was the midweek game. And in this game, you know, he didn't have any goals or assists, but he looked pretty dangerous all game. You know, he's he's gotten or he's done well getting into dangerous areas in his, his short time at Celtic. And, you know, in this game, that was very um, apparent. Like when I watch the highlights, you can watch a lot of the extended highlights on uh, YouTube of a lot of the Scottish Cup games or, you know, Scottish League games, excuse me. And, um, you know, he was involved in a lot of those plays in the highlights. So, um, you know, while he didn't score or assist on any goals, uh, you know, he was definitely a, a difference maker in this game and was a big part of why Celtic won 2-0 on the day. So now moving to the weekend game, um, and in this game, he was actually a substitute in the 67th minute, and Celtic ended up winning this game 5-0 over St. Johnstone. And Tim kind of came on when the, the game was already out of reach. It was 4-0 at the time when he came on. So unfortunately in this game, he didn't really get too many good opportunities to, um, to score or you know, have an assist, and he didn't have either of those in this game. But um, again, he was involved in a few I guess chances, um, he didn't create any chances, but he was definitely involved in some link-up play that led to a few of the chances that um, that Celtic had to to score in the final, you know, 20 minutes or so that he was on the pitch. But, you know, again, good to see him getting multiple performances in a row or appearances in a row, excuse me. And, yeah, it's good to just see him playing um, first-team football or first-team soccer um, over there in Scotland. So, you know, uh Coming up this week, uh, Celtic have uh, their Europa League match against Valencia on Thursday. So that'll be definitely a big test if Tim Way is in the squad. And I, I think he will be in the squad, especially since he didn't play or he played as a substitute um, this past weekend. So it would definitely be, be interesting to see, you know, Tim Way going up against a, a big team like Valencia um, in the Europa League, uh, La Liga side that's done, you know, very well this year. Um you know, making it to the knockout round of the Europa League. So, you know, I, I, I'd be very excited to see Tim Weah, you know, starting for Celtic, uh, you know, in the Europa League. And I, I hope we get to see that happen. But, um, yeah, just also wanted to mention that Celtic now sit six points clear of second place in, uh, you know, the Scottish League. So congrats to them. Um, they haven't lost a game since Tim Weah has signed for them. And, and all the games that Tim Weah has played, they've won. So, that's pretty impressive, and you know, hopefully that that continues to happen. But um, yeah, we'll definitely keep you guys monitored um, with Tim Weah's performance if he does play this week. Um, you know, for Celtic in that big game, and obviously over the weekend too. So uh, yeah, that's all for for Tim today. But now we want to go back over to Germany and talk about West McKinney, who I would say had probably the best week out of um, you know all of our American players. He ended up playing 90 minutes midweek in uh, Schalke's 4-1 win, excuse me, over uh, Dusseldorf in the DFB Cup, uh, you know, midweek. And in this game, he looked very solid. Um, you know, Schalke looked very good on the day. They they actually had a very good game and, and kind of came out right from the start and really took it to Dusseldorf and, you know, scored goals early and often. And... Um, yeah, it was it was a, a good game from Schalke. Uh, one of the rare good games from from them this season. But um, yeah, you know, Weston didn't do anything um, crazy to stand out in this game. You know, he had a very very good defensive performance. Um, you know, had a few opportunities going forward and, and linking play going forward. But um, you know, I would say his his big performance this weekend, and why I'm saying that he was probably the best player um, or best American player over overseas. Um, this week is his performance against Bayern in Schalke's 3-1 loss. And I know, you know, Schalke lost this game 3-1, but on the day, Wes McKinney was the best Schalke player on the pitch and actually picked up an assist in this game. So we ended up playing, you know, all 90 minutes, started the game for Schalke, 
I thought he, he did okay defensively. You know, obviously Bayern scored three goals in this game, so that's never good to see. Um, and especially when you're rating a performance of a midfielder or a defensive midfielder, um, you know, it's never good to give up three goals on the day. But I thought, you know, he did as much as he could defensively uh, for the Schalke team who's just been, you know, hot and cold all season. And this was one of their cold games where they just got outplayed kind of right from the start. But Weston, you know, pro provided the spark for them all day going forward and was really the key, um, I guess, engineer of their attack going forward. He he always seemed to be the one to, you know, pick up balls and, and um, you know, look up field and kind of play passes um, into that final third and, and try to take the ball into the final third all day. So it was, uh, you know, really encouraging to see. I think Weston McKinney has really become um, – a multifaceted midfielder this season or has, has shown that he can be a multifaceted midfielder, um, you know, box to box midfielder, maybe you could call it, but um, he's really shown that he can kind of be a poor man's attacking midfielder at times and, and create a lot of really nice chances. And in this game, you know, he had the assist for a shot, this first goal, and I guess it's their only goal, but um, you know, that goal tied up the game early in the first half and gave Schalke a lot of momentum until a few minutes later when they conceded uh, Byron's second goal. But, you know, Weston really stood out among all of their Schalke players in this game, and that's a really good thing, especially when you're playing Byron, because, you know, Byron always has eyes on players um, that they play against. So I'm not saying I'd like to see Weston McKinney at Byron, but I think definitely having a good game against them raises his rep. Um, not only for Bayern, but also for, you know, the rest of Germany. Um, a lot of players, you know, a lot of people in Germany, um, fans, coaches, players will watch these Bayern games and, you know, see see um, how good they are. So it's definitely, you know, really cool to see Weston have such a good game against them and, um, you know, look like, like I said, the best player for Schalke on the day. So, you know, he's really started to, to string along a lot of good performances for Schalke in their past few games, you know, I really think he's starting to take over that role that Leon Goretzka um, had. He was kind of the the guy who linked play from defense to attack, and he didn't focus so much on defense. And, you know, I think that's kind of what Wes McKinney has been tasked with, uh, especially recently this season. Um, you know, he's played in a lot of different positions for Schalke this year, but I think over the last few games, you know, his positioning has kind of stayed the same and, you know, he's been given the same instruction on, um, you know, what to do for uh, for these games and, and how to attack opponents. So I, uh, you know, I, I was really impressed with Weston this weekend and it was another performance where I was, you know, just in awe of, you know, how good of a player he is and how how good of a future he could have. So. Um, definitely good to see. And, you know, we'll report back to you guys um, next week. Uh, you know, Schalke, I don't exactly know. I didn't write it down who they play next weekend. But, you know, they're still in a um, kind of a rough position in the Bundesliga. So they'll definitely be scrapping for points in, um, you know, every match coming up. So I'd be hard uh, to believe he's not in the, the first team lineup next week. So we'll, uh, we'll report back to you guys next week and, and hopefully have some good news. But now going over to uh, Holland, and we'll talk about Andrea Novakovic for a period of time here. And Andrea actually played 90 minutes and scored a goal for Fortuna Sitard in their 4-1 win over Excelsior um, in the Eredivisie uh, this past weekend. So, you know, Andrea has continued his his um, his goal-scoring form, or I should say his, his good form. He hasn't um, scored in every game he's played recently, but he does have two goals in his last four games. And, um, you know, this is coming off of an injury that he suffered. Um, I believe it was in late December, and then he kind of came back and started playing again mid-January. So it's good to see him kind of linking up some of these games and, um, you know, getting in good form, um, you know, during the winter and, and, and putting a few good performances together for, for Sitard. Um, and also, you know, I just wanted to mention that um, this season, you know, Andrea has five goals and one assist in 17 games played for Sitard in the Eredivisie. So that's, in my opinion, pretty good numbers for, for a team that was just promoted last year from the Erster Divisie um, over there in Holland. So um, definitely good to see Andrea, you know, scoring some goals and, and getting comfortable 
in um, or more comfortable in that league. And, you know, he's definitely looks confident from all the highlights I've seen of him recently. Um, you know, whenever he scores goals, uh, he celebrates with the fans and, you know, really seems to be enjoying his time over in Holland while he's on loan. So that's good to see. And I also just wanted to mention that Sitard now sit in ninth place in the area of VC, which sounds really good because I believe the area of VC is comprised of um, 16 or 18 teams. So ninth place sounds, you know, very good. But unfortunately, that's only four points ahead of the relegation zone over there. So, you know, that's uh that's pretty interesting to see that um you know the bottom half of the table in in Holland is that close but you know Sitard sit I would say in a good position right now you know they'll have to keep winning um, games or picking up points here in the second half of the season if they want to stay up in there to VC but you know so far so good for them and Andrea has been a big reason why they've had success this year so that's uh very good to see. Now uh, we want to go back to uh, Germany for our final player today in this segment, and that'll be none other than Tyler Adams. So Tyler Adams played 90 minutes midweek in uh, RB Leipzig, excuse me, um, RB Leipzig's 1-0 win over Wolfsburg in the DFB Cup. And in this game, you know, Tyler didn't really stand out as much as he did in the first two games for, for Leipzig, but, you know, nonetheless, it was this very solid performance from him, very Good, consistent performance from him. And, um, you know, Leipzig got the win on the day, which was really important because now they're into the quarterfinals for the, the DFB Cup and could potentially win their first trophy, um, you know, in the at the higher level um, of, uh, of German soccer, German football. So um, that's pretty exciting and definitely cool to, to see, you know, Tyler Adams starting yet another game for Leipzig, getting more minutes under his belt for them and contributing to, in my opinion, again, a key win for, um, for a Bundesliga team. So that was good to see. Um, but then, unfortunately, he didn't play, um, or I guess he did play. He was a late substitute for Leipzig, um, playing only one minute for them in their 0-0 draw at the weekend for Frankfurt. And this was kind of to be expected. You know, he's played the last three games in a row for Leipzig um, leading up to this game. So, you know, to see Leipzig give him a break for this game was not that surprising. Um, but Leipzig did suffer on the day and struggle a little bit. So it's cool to see, I guess, that, you know, he has made a pretty good impact coming on um, for Leipzig and, and playing for them in these games. So, you know, I think he'll he'll uh, be back in the starting lineup next weekend um, just because, like I said, you know, Leipzig did not look good this weekend. And, um, you know, Tyler Adams, in, in the time he's played for Leipzig, has looked very good. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens next weekend. Um, and like I, like we've said on this show, you know, we're, we're very excited to see Tyler um, in the Bundesliga finally. And, you know, he's really killed it so far. So we'll definitely, you know, report back to you guys, um, you know, next week when they take on. I'm trying to look. And it was Stuttgart that they play next weekend. So, um, you know, that's another uh, team towards the bottom of the Bundesliga. So, you know, again, I, I think he'll he'll start this game. And um, like we always do, we'll report back to you guys on uh, on his performance and, and let you guys know, you know, what he does for Leipzig. And now, for the best time of the show. It's none other than Quick Kicks. So you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altidore over the wall. All right, guys, so the first player we want to talk about today in quick kicks is Alex Mendez, and he came on and played the final uh, 45 minutes for SC Freiburg's U19s in their unfortunate 3-2 loss over the weekend. Now going over to England, we want to just let you guys know that Matt Miazga played 90 minutes for Reading in their 0-0 draw with Sheffield Wednesday. And going over to Denmark, we want to let you guys know that Christian Kappis, or Cappy, however you pronounce his last name, let us know in the comments, um, made his league debut for Hobro, playing the final three minutes of their 0-0 draw with Horsens. Now shifting back over to England, we want to let you guys know that Cameron Carter-Vickers played a very strong 90 minutes for Swansea in their 1-0 win over Millwall. And going back over to Hobro in Denmark, we want to let you guys know that Emmanuel Sabi played 90 minutes in that same game for Hobro um, in that 0-0 you know, draw uh, against Horsens. And staying in Denmark, we also want to let you guys know that Jonathan Amon 
played uh, only six minutes in a substitute appearance for Norchiland in their 3-3 uh, three -three draw with Bronby uh, this past weekend. Now going over to Germany, we want to uh, let you guys know that Josh Sargent played only two minutes for Bremen this weekend in, um, in their 4-0 win over Augsburg. And Josh also did not feature and was not in their 18 for um, Bremen's 3-3 win on penalties against Dortmund midweek. So hopefully we'll get to see you know, Josh on the field a little bit more for Bremen this upcoming week. Now going back over to England, we want to let you guys know that Dwayne Holmes played a very strong um, 81 minutes for Derby County in their 2-0 win over Hull City this weekend. And finally, we want to let you guys know that Julian Green played 90 minutes and with Greuther, was Greuther first man of the match in their 1-0 win over Duisburg this past weekend. And that was coming off a very bad performance in a 6-0 loss. So congrats to Julian and way to bounce back. Now, finally, we want to end today's show with another young ya. And today that would be Cade Hagen, who is a 16-year-old midfielder who just signed for Sporting Guillon um, over in Spain and actually had a really nice goal over the weekend. So, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully find the video and play it right here. But if you can't, if we don't play it here, uh, you should definitely check it out on Twitter. Um, and, you know, definitely we'll uh, keep you guys updated on Cade as he, you know, continues his career abroad. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe down below. And also, you know, we have some great social media accounts. So follow us on um, Twitter and Instagram. We just surpassed uh, 2,500 followers on Instagram. So thank you guys for helping us do that. And again, you know, thank you guys for helping us get to uh, 400 subscribers on YouTube. It, uh, it means a lot. And it's really cool to see, you know, you guys interacting with us and, and letting us know that, um, you know, this show is something that you want to continue watching week to week. So um, yeah, with that being said, you know, I think there's only one thing left to say, and that would be one day we will win the World Cup.